Okay, I want to pause right here because this is a critically important point to your patient's safety. Anyone who's taking corticosteroid therapy has a risk for adrenal gland suppression. Now, we'll talk about some real specific risks in that, but I want you to stop for just a moment because this is the most important point that we're going to talk about in dealing with corticosteroids. See, I've got a silly name up there, but this is really very serious because when I give extra corticosteroids to the patient, like I give them a medication, we radically change what's going on in their body. Remember when we talked about how things went from the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary to the adrenal gland, right? You've got the coach, the quarterback, and the receiver. Now, if I start giving you extra corticosteroids, that hypothalamus is not going to feel the need to send CRH to the anterior pituitary, right? So then the anterior pituitary, since it not, it's not receiving CRH, is not going to have the stimulus to send ACTH to the adrenal cortex. So what's the adrenal cortex doing? <laughs> the answer, nothing. And the higher the level of the corticosteroids are, the longer the patient is on those doses, the more likely the gland is to become suppressed. Because see, it's just not being stimulated. The coach sees no reason to send in CRH. Hypothalamus doesn't send in ACTH. The adrenal gland is not stimulated to put out its hormones. So it just becomes really sleepy or suppressed. This is the point that you cannot go on until you have this solid in your mind. Anytime we add steroids to a patient, we put them at a small risk or even a significant risk of adrenal gland suppression. So these changes can start happening just within the first week of high dose steroids. Now stop, I don't wanna freak you out. If someone sends you home with a solumedrol dose pack, I don't want you to think like, oh my goodness, I don't wanna take those. No, no, these are high dose steroids for greater than a week, we'll start to see some small changes. Remember, it takes time for the adrenal gland to really become suppressed. But you will start seeing those changes, the beginning of that, in just about a little over a week if it's high enough steroids. So you'll have less CRH and ACTH, right? Those are suppressed because Hypothalamus doesn't see any reason to send CRH down, so then the anterior pituitary won't see any reason to send ACTH out. That's why CRH and ACTH are suppressed. Now, the longer that adrenal gland is suppressed, the longer it doesn't receive that ACTH, the gland almost becomes atrophied, right? It, it might come to the point where we can't bring it back. Now, most often, if the patient is on corticosteroids for a period of time and it's high enough dose that they experience adrenal gland suppression, their adrenal gland will come back, but it's not overnight. It could even take up to months. Keep in mind, I'm giving you the worst case scenarios. This doesn't happen to everyone, but we always want you to be aware of what the worst case scenario is so you can be alert and catch the early signs. Now, the problem when my adrenal gland is suppressed and I go under stress, I need more of those hormones. So if you have a client who's taking corticosteroids, the dosage may need to be adjusted if they're experiencing significant stress. So silly name, serious problem. Because you know, in sugar daddy, you don't have to do anything but just be available. That's why I call it the sugar daddy syndrome. When we give you medications, all the responsibilities of the adrenal gland are removed, right? They don't have to put anything out because I've replaced it with a medication. That's why they're at risk for adrenal gland suppression. So takeaway point here after all of that is that you have to write very clear and specific instructions for a patient when they're gonna be weaning off steroids. You don't wanna abruptly stop them. You wanna make sure that you wean them gradually off and we make sure that we give the patient very specific instructions on how they'll do that. Either they'll decrease the dosage or the number of pills or however that works. We will need to communicate a very clear plan on how your patient will walk through that process.
Okay, now that's been a lot of information. Let's see where you are. We're going to study as you go. See if you can answer these questions. I want you to match the hormone with the endocrine player. Just draw a line from the player to the hormone. Okay, now here's Nurse Natalie to help you kind of have a pre-test question. You're going to have to pause the video and really think about this. But how would you help keep a patient safe by teaching them about not stopping corticosteroids abruptly? So use language that would be appropriate for a patient to communicate how would you teach them why this is so important. Okay, so let's wrap up what we've discussed about corticosteroids. First of all, corticosteroids are produced in the adrenal cortex. Now when we give patients corticosteroids as medications, they have higher levels than normal and their adrenal gland might start to be suppressed. The higher the dose, the longer the therapy, the greater the risk of adrenal gland suppression. And remember, oral corticosteroids or IV corticosteroids have an even greater risk than a topical corticosteroid or an inhaled corticosteroid. Now, critically important that you understand why we don't abruptly stop corticosteroid therapy and how you teach your patients why we don't abruptly stop corticosteroid therapy. Now, when we say wean, we gave you a quick question on how would you teach a patient. Here's how I want you to kind of remember some important points. Think about it being a weekend. You know that feeling when you're all asleep and you're warm and snug and you don't have to do anything? How do you like to be woke up? I like to wake up when I'm ready, right? When I feel like it, when I just kind of roll over and stretch. That's how I like to start the day. So does your adrenal gland. Nobody likes to wake up like this. <coughs> Nobody likes that. So when we talk about weaning, that's what you want to do with your patients. You want them to wake up like this, nice, slow, and gentle. That's why we start slowly reducing the amount of medication that we're giving the patient. So you kind of just nudge that little adrenal gland. You kind of let it know, hey, we need you to wake up gently and start working again. Not the meh, meh, meh of an alarm clock. So when you're weaning medications, it's important as we slowly decrease the medication, give that adrenal gland time to gently wake up and start doing what it normally needs to do.